I'm Brian Brock. I teach ethics, theological ethics, at the University of Aberdeen in the Divinity Department, and um, I want to give I want to talk to you today about the theory of just war, and I want to do so under uh, three headings. The first is where did the theory come from, and why is it important to ask about that? Second, what is the theory supposed to do? And finally, what does the theory not do? Um, so first of all, where did the theory come from? Um, it's important to remember the origin of the theory because it comes out of a very specific problem, and that is um, that the, the founder of Christianity, Jesus, was called himself the Prince of Peace, and um, very often um, spoke against violence. And um, for 300 years, because Christianity, Christians questioned um, the gods of the age and of the state, they were considered politically seditious. And, um, but with the conversion of Constantine uh, around three, in the year 300, Christians were suddenly faced with a new problem. Could they gain political office and could they deploy the coercive power of the state? at the same time that they confess themselves to be followers of the Prince of Peace. The, fi the, the theological figure who most influentially answered that question in the affirmative was uh, uh, Augustine of Hippo, who managed to explain in a winning way how uh, the love that Jesus enjoined to every Christian could be fit together with an account of Christian responsibility to, the, to care for the good of all people that led to Christians becoming part officers in a well-ordered state. His main example, interestingly, is not the soldier or even the policeman, but the judge. And the problem was in those days that they didn't have the interrogation techniques that we have today, but they used torture because they assumed that if you tortured people, they weren't telling lies. And the casualty of that process was the torturing of innocent people. So. Augustine thought quite hard about whether Christians could be judges given that they would be t torturing innocent people. And he, in the end, said that it was a Christian responsibility toward all people to protect the innocent against, um, uh, against those who might do them harm, and therefore Christians should, uh, should be judges. And the way that he did that is the origins of uh, the theory of just war. He never claimed, however, that it was going to be a pleasant experience to be in a position of uh, a Christian in a position of political power. And he had a very complex psycho psychological account of what's entailed in doing that. For him, it was a very melancholy duty that we're talking about. And that moral ambivalence that was very clear in the early uh, beginning of the tradition is often lost in contemporary accounts of just war theory which are presented much more like a checklist for deciding whether or not a war can be started with a clear conscience. So that's why it's important to think about the historical origins to recover the fact that um, it's, not a, it's not an algorithm or a, 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 a mathematical problem, but it's um, dealing with conflicting responsibilities. Second, what is the theory supposed to do then? Well, the first thing we need to notice is that it's a theory designed to help people in position and power make good decisions. In other words, the addressee is the ruling class, politicians and generals. Um, it obviously has much wider effects, but that's who it's addressed to. Um, second, the content of the theory is the aim to reduce the deployment of violence by setting up rules about what can and can't be done, about how uh, lethal and sublethal violence is deployed only as a last resort, the theory begins to flesh out what it means to uh, be willing to deploy violence, but only as a final resort. And the most useful way to think about the effects of the theory are to think about um, the fact that police in the UK don't carry guns, and that most British citizens um, are happy about that. That is a direct effect of um, the uh, just war theory, and it is, would be useful to study the historical origins of that belief. Um, uh, in terms of the, what is the theory supposed to do, the bottom line, we mustn't forget, is that it's a justification for killing people. 
It's a way of thinking through and trying to make moral acts which fundamentally throw our humanity into question. Third point, um, what does the theory not do? The most recurrent criticism of just war theory since the Second World War has been that it has been re rendered conceptually problematic by the advent of weapons that can never be proportionately deployed, most classically um, nuclear weapons. Um, that question has been played out again when we think about um, uh, the way drone warfare operates and the way the theater war of war expands to cover the whole globe. Second, because the theory was built for those in power, it's often difficult to include views of other actors, and the most prominent actors are soldiers and civilians in combat theaters. Um, th the theory tends to think of soldiers as largely obedient to commands, and civilians as largely passive victims. And some critics have suggested that these are unhelpful portrayals, especially if we're trying to pick up the pieces after a war has begun. And that point brings us to the cutting edge of much academic discussion around just war theory, that it shouldn't only think about just war considerations when starting wars and in the means of their prosecution, but it also should include criteria about the aftermath of war, this post-bellum, which the classic theory doesn't include. Um, some of those worries have stemmed from wars that have left very messy, protracted um, uh, after effects that were very damaging to civilians. Others have had to do with increasing realization of what modern warfare does to soldiers. Um, and we see that particularly poignantly when we realize that more soldiers have been killed from modern uh, nation states by suicide than in combat. And the theory really doesn't take any account of the moral injury that accrues to those who are actually doing the killing, since it's not designed for them primarily. It's designed for the politicians and policymakers who um, have to decide whether or not to go to war. Uh, in a similar way, it really doesn't take any account of the gendered violence that has accompanied military life really from the beginning. A different set of questions arises when we ask if the theory is ever actually deployed as it purports to be, as a, as a checklist um, that helps generals or politicians know when they shouldn't go to war, or whether in practice it's really political expediency that um, rules that decision and just war theory comes in after the fact to defend decisions that have already been made on other grounds. Um, here I think it's important to read some historical studies of how decisions to go to war or to prosecute war were carried out. And um, some obvious places to look for those historical studies are um, texts about the decision to invade Iraq in 2001 and topple Saddam Hussein, uh, in which um, uh, Britain was very directly involved, or to drop the first nuclear bomb in Nagasaki in 1945. Um, and you might also look at the way that um, Serbian politicians used uh, just war arguments to keep the UN out of uh, Kosovo uh, when they were intent on ethnic cleansing. So uh, just to make a final point, as a theologian I can say um, uh, there remains substantial disagreement among theologians about the theological defensibility of the theory as a whole. Um, and some, such as Nigel Bigger of Oxford, defend the theory as the only responsible Christian position, and others such as Stanley Hauerwas of Duke Divinity School insisting that Christians should never be in the business of justifying or practicing killing other human beings. Um, in his view, the theory in practice um, operates primarily as a cover for worship of nation and nationalism. I think that should give you enough lines to investigate. Um, I, I hope that you find it interesting material and I wish you the very best on your exams.